everybody, welcome back to my 12 days of Ambi Mist. This is day 10. I can't believe we are almost already over with the series. That was not a very good English sentence, but we're just gonna keep moving. So I think in my second video, I did a Q&A and I talked about my favorite holiday smell and I talked about Oma's Christmas wine. So today, that is what we are making. So a little history on Oma's Christmas wine. Um, every Christmas Eve, we have been able to get together and go to my Oma's house. Oma is German for grandmother. And every year she would have this amazing punch. And when we were little, we could have a couple of sips, but we didn't really like it. And it was only as I became an adult that I really began to appreciate her Christmas wine. My mom and I got into a little bit of a competition at one point and we each made Oma's Christmas wine and made her taste it and she chose the winner and it was me which was very exciting because I cooked it with her and it's funny watching her cook because she never ever and this is probably everyone's grandmother she never measured so it was a lot of tweaking and every single year when I make it I feel like I have to tweak it a little bit one way or another just to kind of get it to taste exactly right so this is probably my favorite thing ever it is what brings me straight into Christmas time when I smell it in my kitchen and this year I'm gonna give it um, as gifts for some of my family as well because we cannot be together to enjoy it so I want to give it to them so that they have a little piece of our Christmas tradition in their home this year so I'm gonna show you everything that I have laid out here and we are going to get into the recipe I will list it down below if you guys are interested in making it I don't know if it's just you know my family who loves it but you know there are different recipes online for this type of similar mold wine. I don't know if it's necessarily a German mold wine, but um, my Oma is German, so I like to think it is. All right, so this is the pot we're going to use. This is actually my grandmother's pot. Um, we have the Carlo Rossi Sangria, which is very important. Um, orange, orange juice, some sugar, cinnamon sticks, a lemon, and some black tea. Now, the Carlo Rossi is very important. I have never strayed from this. Typically, you buy it in like a big round jug that's a, uh, more liters than this. This is only one and a half, but usually I buy the four liter and I use half of it for each batch but they didn't have that this year at the store so I just picked up the one and a half liter I will never stray from what Oma tells me to do so it's going to be Carlo Rossi always and forever so we will just start by actually we'll get the tea going so what you want to do with the tea is it's about four cups of water and five tea bags you want to throw the tea bags in with the water and let it steep but you don't want to let it boil so keep it on low and keep an eye on it I forgot to mention one of the most important aspects of this and that is whole cloves so sorry so you definitely need these as well so now that we have the tea going I'm gonna pop open this bottle Carlo Rossi you know the good stuff oh that did not work was there no cork in this thing wow okay it's a screw top <laughs> all right well thankfully we're gonna use this entire thing all right so I'm gonna put the pot over on the stove put this whole guy in like I mentioned before, when I make this, typically I get the big bottle of the Carlo Rossi and it's about two liters per like batch that you make. So just popping open this second bottle and going to add a little bit. This is one and a half liters, so I'll probably add about a third of the bottle. My math is correct, but I'm terrible at math, so I'd say that's about right. When it comes time to test, um, you know, we'll be able to tweak it a little bit, so I'm gonna keep that out. The next thing we're going to do is add cinnamon sticks. When I made this with Oma before, she said three to four cinnamon sticks, so we'll start with three. In typical Oma fashion, she kind of told me about a palmful of clove. I think if it's ground, you do about a teaspoon, so I'm just gonna do a little bit of clove, because if we need to add more, we can, but clove is a pretty strong flavor. Next, we're going to add orange juice. So if you're using real oranges, you want to use um, a whole bunch of them, like six to eight of them. And something that I love about juicing them is she would always get a little bit of like uh, the pith in there, like little pulp, pulp, the pulp in there. Um, I don't have oranges. I'm just going to use some orange juice. So I'm going to throw in, I think like three cups of that to start. I'm just going to add two cups for now because when I added it, it looked about right. Of course, if we need to add more, we certainly will. Next, I'm going to take the peel off of this lemon and then we're going to juice it. Because I have it, I'm going to add a little bit of fresh orange juice. Try to get some of that pulp in there like Oma does. All right, so we've added the wine, the orange, the cinnamon, the lemon, and the ground clove. I usually wait until it's warm to add the sugar. So 
so we're just gonna pop it on low. So this is the part where we just kind of wait, we wait for the tea to come up so that we can dump it into the pot, and then we're just gonna let this cook for pretty much as long as you like. Um, don't let it like reduce for a super long time, um, but you wanna cook it so that everything, all the, all the flavors are melted, and also um, you wanna make sure it's warm enough so you can add your sugar. Like I said before, it's kind of like a taste test, and I hate to say that like you have to taste it to know what you need to add, but it's kind of true. Um, so once that is all um, good to go, we'll taste it and see what it needs, whether that's a little bit more wine or more sugar, orange, whatever. Um, so we're gonna wait for the tea to come up and then we'll add it into the pot. So it's funny because I'm reading off a recipe that I must have written right after I made it with Oma and um, she says bring the tea bags to a boil and then let's sit. And I've never let them come to a boil. So I think I'll let it bubble just a tiny bit but I just don't want it to get bitter. So I'll give it a second of bubbling and then and it's gonna go to the pot. Do you guys have any Christmas traditions? Like any food traditions? Any any like anything you drink in particular? Or any snacks that you're always gonna make? Like uh, Tristan's parents always make um, these like beautiful Christmas cookies. They're so good. And usually on Christmas day, we'll have like a beef wellington or something and this delicious Christmas trifle. And when we were growing up, um, my, my dad and my stepmom always did like a big dinner on Christmas day too. Let me know if you guys have any traditions like that. I would love to know. So this tea is looking just about ready. It's really smoky, um, so it's obviously, you know, wanting to come to a boil. We're not going to let it get there, um, but it looks like we're just about ready to throw it into the pot. As you can see, we have some bubbling action happening here, very low. So I might turn this down a touch. I don't want it to boil. So now that the black tea is in there, I'm gonna give it a few minutes, um, make sure everything is nice and warm, and then I'm gonna throw in one and a half cups of sugar. Now it seems like a lot, but we have a lot of liquid in there. <laughs> Two liters of wine anyway, plus the orange juice, plus the tea, so a cup and a half isn't gonna kill you. You're probably gonna wanna add some more. We'll keep you posted. All right, I think it's warm enough to add the sugar, so one and a half cups. gonna give it a super preliminary taste. It's definitely going to need time to sort of like cook down and all the flavors smell, but I'm just gonna do a quick taste now to see if there's anything right off the bat that I notice needs to be added. And uh, yeah, and then we'll let it cook for a bit. Mm. Pretty sweet. I don't think it's, I'm gonna add anything yet. I think part of the uh, trick of this is that you have to kind of let it cook down for a while. I did also use sangria, which is sweeter than burgundy. So I'm gonna let that hang out for a bit and revisit it. I think for now we're gonna leave it, um, but I'll be back to check in on it in a little while. On second thought, I think we need a few more cloves in there. Not a lot, just a few. And I might have to add more lemon juice, but we're gonna leave it, like I said, for now, and then come back in a little bit. All right, so we've been cooking down for a little while. I have added some more clove. I added a splash more of the wine and a little bit of lemon juice. Um, I've been texting with my siblings because they've obviously had the wine a lot. So I was telling them what it tasted like and what I added. So I think I might have to add a splash more wine, but I think the key is just to let this cook down for a bit. All right, everybody, I think I'm going to call it here. I'm going to let this continue to kind of simmer and hang out and do its thing. So a couple of closing thoughts. Um, I consulted with my siblings who have also made slash enjoyed the Christmas wine in the past to kind of see where I need to add or whatever. Um, so Oma says to either use the sangria or the burgundy. Uh, because I use sangria, I didn't use as much orange juice, but I could have probably cut back on the sugar a little bit. So maybe next time I'll use burgundy because it needs like a little bit of punch. Like it needs like... I don't know how to describe it, but it usually has like some, you know, little punch in there. And um, I think that just might be Oma's special secret. Um, I did add some extra clove and a couple more splashes of wine. But yeah, I think letting it cook for a while too always helps. Um, I like to have it hanging out on the stove for a little while. It makes the house smell incredible, but also it's just so delicious. So I will put a little bit in a cup and show you. Oh God, there's freaking cat fur all over my cup. All right, so. It is just piping hot, purpley deliciousness. Mm, it is Christmas time. It definitely needs like a little bit of punch. So not my best batch, but 
not bad. So if you guys do recreate this, let me know. I would love to hear if you also enjoyed it or if you have another mulled wine recipe that you enjoy or really any Christmas Eve recipe. Thanks for coming along with me in my kitchen and join me for the last couple of days of Ambi Miss. I'll leave all the good stuff down below, including the recipe, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. Oh, forgot to mention, um, I usually put this in the fridge in like a mason jar or something and just reheat it in the microwave. Definitely drink it warm. Cheers.